I did not like tennis when I was younger. I still have my moments. If I lost, I'd walk off the court and just be like, I don't want to play ever again. I'm done. Her match was at 2. We got there at 2.30, and Mary was out there eating licorice. And my mom was like, did you finish your match? Mary was like, no, I retired. My mom was like, you can quit if you want. But I had to sit there and watch my sister play. So <laughs> since I was there anyway, I was like, I might as well just play. <laughs> I wanted to be better than her. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, I still do. I don't think I've ever beaten her once in my life. I can't remember if there's a time that she's been close to beating me. I mean, we had good rallies, but no. The first pro tournament I ever played, I played my sister in the first match. Each time we switched sides, she'd just pat me on the back and be like, it's okay. I lost Ono, oh, didn't get a game. I don't know if you got that older sister thing. She's she's not going to beat me. She kind of sucks herself out. She is the one person who can truly get into my head and mentally destroy me. And it makes me want to work harder. <laughs> so, yeah. Elizabeth was a big time recruit, right? She's a high five star, definitely a blue chipper. I mean, top kid in the country. She's being highly sought after by really every university in the country. She went to Baylor University and then transferred to Tennessee University. The matches and the people that she beat, I wanted to be able to do the same thing. I mean, what's better to grow up with someone who can push you and kind of mold you into who you are and a competitor today? It was always, oh, you're Elizabeth Prophet's little sister. Oh, if you win a match, oh, it's because you're Elizabeth Prophet's little sister. If you lose a match, it's because you're not as good as your sister. I wanted to be able to make my own name for myself. She saw me like go through all the calls and talking to all the coaches. And then from there, she's like, okay, well, Lizzie's doing this and I'm gonna go the opposite direction. And I'm gonna see what's out there for me. The schools that I had already been talking to, such as U of A, came to watch me play at Winter Nationals. It's one of the major tournaments for juniors for recruiting. And she beat the number one seed. I think the girl was committed to go to Duke or something like, and Mary ended up beating her. And I was, I was shocked. <laughs> I knew she was good, but when I saw her beat that girl, that was when it really like clicked for me that she was very good. If you walk into Winter Nationals and beat the number one seed, all eyes are on you at that point forward. Like you are turning into one of the most sought after recruits after that. They're looking at her not because she's Elizabeth Prophet's little sister, they're looking at her because she's Mary Lewis and she's good. I had a good 20 text messages on my phone. One of them said, I wanted to send you this text to let you know that we were interested in you before you won. Well, if you were sincerely interested in someone, you would have contact them before they beat someone who is considered good. I think she wanted to be wanted. And I think she committed to the first school because I don't think she really wanted to go through everything that she saw me like go through. I wanted to go to a college that seemed genuinely interested in making me a better person and a better tennis player, not just someone to fill up their lineup. Tennis has always been my safe spot. No matter what we were going through when we were younger, I could go on the tennis court and hit as hard as I possible, get all my anger out, and feel so much better and relieved because once I walked onto the court, nothing else really mattered. My mom was married to my sister's dad and one of the nights we heard yelling and a loud bang and me and my sister ran into the room and my mom's face was smashed and we left that same night. And after that, 
we literally just made our way <laughs> and as much as we struggled before that happened it was not as much we had a roof over our head to a certain extent it wasn't the best but it was still a warm place after that life kind of just went it had its high moments and it had its low moments and we dealt with both of them the apartments just kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller and and then like it just got worse and worse and worse like, every time it just got worse nobody would have known that after we practice and everything and the nights where we slept in the car and there was many nights where she'd park a certain place and a police officer would come knock on the window and tell us we would have to move and we just moved to a different spot <laughs> wake up go to a gas station get all set for the day and then go about our business and practice and repeat my mom didn't really have a, a support system or, or someone to, to to depend on to help her through that with two young girls. She, she didn't. At times, it seemed like there was no hope. And my mom always stayed positive. She'd put a smile on her face. She'd be like, it's okay, we're gonna make it. We're gonna get to where we need to be and you guys are gonna do what you guys need to do and put aside what we're going through. We knew that we could always go play tennis, even though it was hard and tiring and days we didn't even wanna go practice, it was always there. That was always that stable point that we had and that was extremely important for us making it to where we are now because I don't know where I'd actually be if I didn't play tennis. her first collegiate year at University of Arizona. I decided to transfer and I went into the transfer portal. I saw her in there, saw her results at Arizona and flew her out here on a visit and I mean, just took off from there. I thought she was gonna be an unbelievable player for us, but we did have a rocky start. School is more difficult here than what it was at U of A. I was ineligible for the first year that I was here for season. From second grade all the way up until college, I was homeschooled. I was terrified when I got to Baylor because like I hadn't been in a classroom since I was like eight. I was nervous for Mary because Mary hadn't been in school. Like school was very important to my mom, but we just didn't do it the traditional way. To be frank with you, I didn't trust her. I didn't know what this kid was about. I thought maybe she wanted just to come here and hang out on a scholarship and, and not participate, not be a good teammate. Like, I, I didn't know. I kind of felt like I was at a deficit, trying to make sure I was on top of everything, being on time to practice. It was very stressful. We're not a big team. You can't hide in numbers here. You just can't. What's going on in your life and things, regardless of like how outgoing you are, is just gonna seem to pull its way forward. It took me having a really uncomfortable and brutal conversation with her. I knew from that moment that she wanted to be here and she wanted to make a difference. I don't mind my story because I think experiences that you go through make you who you are. You can either let it be something that weighs on you or you can keep pushing forward. It's made me who I am. 
She's been back-to-back All Big Ten player and has the ITA Arthur Ashe Scholarship. She's made it into the Fall National Championships, which has never been done by a player. All-American main draw, second time in program history. She's leading us forward. She's gonna go down as one of the best, if not the greatest, Michigan State women's tennis player that's ever walked through this program. Game changer. I can't believe that that little girl who quit in the middle of her tennis match to eat licorice <laughs> is an All-American. That is absolutely stunning to me. I am so proud of her. She has had a collegiate tennis career that I could only aspire to have. I am so, so very grateful especially due to the fact that Coach Bruno and Coach Tyler have been absolutely amazing. If I'm going through something, they try and listen and they try to make it to where you're comfortable rather than, no, you're an athlete first. Yes, winning is important and we all wanna win, but also they see the bigger picture. Stick with it, totally. Controlling that baseline, using that forehand, hanging in, point. Okay, come on, focus in. She's tough, she's resilient, she's a competitor. She is constantly wanting to improve herself and get better, and she would run through a brick wall for this program and myself. I truly feel that way, and I would do the exact same for her. Being a Spartan has been amazing. You can be going through something, you have teammates who you can lean on and who can help you, and be there for you. I've learned throughout time that even if you're struggling for one day, you have to get back up and keep going because what you're going through on that day doesn't make you who you are. Just because today's difficult doesn't mean tomorrow's gonna be as hard. It may just be a little less than what it was the day before, but as hard as it may seem at the time, sooner or later it does get better. <laughs>